Hello and welcome to St. Vincent and the Grenadines, a small sunny chain of islands in the Southern Caribbean. Known mostly for the secluded luxury that attracts celebrities, royals, and the super wealthy to boutique islands like Mustique, as well as for sailing waters that are considered some of the finest in the world, St. Vincent and the Grenadines has nonetheless not yet established itself on the wider tourism horizon. Lack of connectivity has limited the undeniable tourism and economic potential of the country. It has also caused this, the main island of St. Vincent, to be mostly bypassed by visitors and prevented the benefits of tourism from rippling out across the population. But the opening of a new international airport has caused high hopes that all this is soon to change. The airport will provide direct international links for tourism as well as for trade and exports. We're here to find out how the new airport can be leveraged to open up St. Vincent and the Grenadines to international markets, what other plans are in place to further expand what is still a small economy and which industries are ripe for investment. Join me as we go on location. St. Vincent and the Grenadines is an archipelago made up of 32 islands and keys, with the largest being St. Vincent, where the capital Kingstown sits. A former French and British colony, the country gained independence in 1979 and is now a parliamentary democracy led by longtime Prime Minister Dr. Ralph Gonsalves. English is the official language. St. Vincent and the Grenadines' small economy is heavily reliant on just two sectors, agriculture and tourism. There's still much scope for development of both of these two pillars of the economy, and importantly, to cultivate other potential new growth industries. Camilo Gonçalves, Minister of Economic Planning and son of the Prime Minister, says that is indeed all part of the plan. The vision for St. Vincent and the Grenadines is really to, to take a multi-island state that has traditionally uh, relied on agriculture and very small amounts of niche tourism and catapult it forward um, into becoming a, a very vibrant and active uh, player in the regional and global economy. And a lot of what that involves is making the transition from agriculture to services, um, one of the primary services being tourism. Um, but we also have uh, tremendous inve investments underway in the areas of technology, small business, light manufacturing, and a very vibrant uh, creative and art space that, that's been making some, making some waves in the region and we hopeful, hopefully internationally. The country's lack of previous widespread development presents an opportunity for both tourists and investors to explore uncharted terrain, and new air connections will make it easier logistically for them to do so. We in Simmons in the Grandings, because we are virtually untapped, presents, I think, a good proposition for investors who would look to come in and carve a niche of something that has been trade tested somewhere else, but not here in St. Vincent. One recent development is an infrastructural intervention. We never had an international airport before. We have one now that certainly will open up the skies for us. and. Um, access to the country is going to be a lot easier. Now, that is mainly going to affect the tourism product initially, but then from the tourism industry, um, other industries would, would spin off. Up until early 2017, visitors arriving in St. Vincent would have landed in tiny, outdated E.T. Joshua Airport, usually on a small plane coming from a nearby destination. There had long been in the works a plan to build a more modern airport that could accommodate larger aircraft coming from further afield. It was a contentious, expensive plan that only came to fruition decades after the idea was first floated. It was in February 2017 that the newly christened Argyle International Airport first opened its doors and its runway for business. 
While still small by international standards, the airport should nonetheless help St. Vincent catch up with some of its neighbors. If you look in terms of what we have facility-wise, we, we are pretty much at the cost of the airports of any region. Most of the airports in the region are much older, mature, and they are, if you check most of them, they are in the development stage to come to this standard. We may be lacking in size, but what we are planning to do in relation to that is improve on efficiency to, to complement the, the lack of size. But I think we are right there with them. Trust me, we are right there with them. The tourism sector will be the obvious beneficiary from the opening of the airport. Now that the airport is here with us, um, now that we have announced that we are going to have a record cruise season, our yacht arrivals um, have been good over the years and I think it will be even better this year. So I think all of the dots um, are being, um, are coming together, really. And I think that um, the product that we have as a tourism destination um, is improving and uh, therefore we will see the interest increasing. The government is seeking investment in hotels and resorts and other segments of the industry. National Properties, the government agency charged with overseeing state lands, is offering to the private sector sites for development in stunning settings on Beckway, Union Island, and St. Vincent. Incentives are available to entice resort developers. There's also a scheme to repurpose the area around the old airport into a new multi-purpose development. We have said, um, the government, that we are open for investment. Um, we have indicated that we will partner, whether local investors, foreign investors, will partner with you. Um, we have the land available um, throughout St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Um, so we, you can come in, you get the necessary tax holiday, um, the necessary um, incentive programs are available to them. We offer, through our Hotels Aid Act, we offer um, duty-free, um, we offer duty-free concessions, we offer food and beverage concessions once hotel, the hotel is operational, we offer tax holidays, um, and basically, even if it's not covered within our legislation, it doesn't mean that it's a completely exempt. You still have the opportunity to request the concession from our cabinet and it will be given ample consideration. While the tourism and hospitality sector on the main island of St. Vincent is not yet very developed, some of the Grenadine Islands like Mustique and Bekwe, where we're headed now, long ago established themselves as luxury destinations. The islands of Mustique, Kanawan, and Palm Island cater to an exclusive clientele. Kanawan has recently been attracting investment from high-end resort chains like Mandarin Oriental, while Mustique restricts itself to just 100 private villas. Bekwe is popular with the yachting crowd and in need of more accommodation offerings, hence the lands being offered by national properties. Given that the country's rugged, unspoilt beauty has largely escaped the notice of many international travelers, it seems inevitable that the tourism sector is set for a transformation once the world gets a closer look at St. Vincent and the Grenadines. What makes St. Vincent unique is that we are an archipelago of islands where we have the beautiful nature island of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, and then we have the lovely Grenadine Island. So you have on St. Vincent, a, a number of things that you can do as a nature lover. We have our falls, our, our lots of waterfalls. We have our nature trails. We have lots of ruins, history. Um, Black Sand Beach is very unique. And um, the Grenadines, on the other hand, also now has beautiful white sand beaches, um, perfect sailing water and snorkeling waters. And, and combined together, it makes a unique product in the Caribbean. We are never going to be, in my view, a country of mass tourism. That, that's just not the way we are, and I think that's fine and it's good. I see great opportunity here if we develop those tourism sites and we promote what is best about us and not try to copy other people. We don't need to be another Caribbean destination with everybody coming just to burn up their skin on the nice, beautiful beaches. There's a lot more to do here, I think, and if we go along that line, I think we'll be all right. In addition to tourism, the other pillar of St. Vincent and the Grenadines economy, agriculture, also stands to gain from improved connectivity to regional and global markets. Beyond the beaches and into the heartland of the island of St. Vincent, lush, hilly terrain and fertile soil offers ideal growing conditions for a cornucopia of fruits, vegetables and starches. In places like this, Mesopotamia Valley, otherwise known as the breadbasket of St. Vincent, 
there is a wealth of agricultural potential just waiting to be unearthed. Having gone through a process of privatization, foreign partners are being sought to help maximize the agriculture and fishery sector's potential in a moment when demand is growing for the country's products. The Argyle International Airport is going to create a significant opportunity for farmers and fishers to get produce to several markets, particularly in North America and also in Europe. Hitherto, we were not able to access these markets directly. We had to go through either Barbados or Trinidad and Tobago. It was very difficult, expensive as well, and the perishability of a lot of these goods had a very negative impact on the businesses. As it pertains to agro-processing, we have large quantities of raw material here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, and we are looking for persons to add value to a lot of the raw material that we have here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. While tourism and agriculture dominate the economy and probably will continue to do so for the foreseeable future, expansion of these two crucial sectors can have significant trickle-down effects on the rest of the economy and spark growth in ancillary services such as construction, catering and retail. It can also help boost incomes and local purchasing power, which can then have a knock-on effect on the broader services sector. Other sectors identified for future potential are ICT, creative industries, light manufacturing, renewable energy, and financial services. The financial services sector is small but stable and expects a positive residual effect from the country's enhanced connectivity and any growth that comes to the economy's main sectors as a result. St. Vincent actually is one of the oldest financial centers in the Eastern Caribbean. Um, international banking in particular dates back to the 1970s. The sector here in St. Vincent is quite small, um, but there's a wide range of financial services that are available from this jurisdiction. And these are, of course, backed by legislation. As a small island economy, St. Vincent and the Grenadines remains vulnerable to external shocks. But there is a clear feeling that the country has the wind at its back at this moment. And I really think that if you come back to talk to me 10 years from now and certainly look around the region and compare us to our neighbors to the north and south and east, I think you'll see that St. Vincent and the Grenadines will be probably, um, and I'm not just saying it because I'm sitting here, but, but will probably be one of the more vibrant and fast growing economies in the region. It's still early days for the Argyle International Airport. And while a lot of hopes have been pinned on it, expectations also have to be managed. It will take some time before all the necessary trade and tourism channels are established and before they can be fully utilized. And St. Vincent and the Grenadines too is at a very early stage of its long-term development plan. Island time is rarely ever rushed. Things tend to happen more incrementally here. But this new step, however small, is an important one in creating more two-way traffic between this exquisite, undiscovered little island nation and the bigger world. And off the back of the new air connections, there are some identifiable opportunities for investors who might wish to get in at the ground level before potential growth sectors take off. Now I hope you've enjoyed this tour of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Join me next time to see where we go on location.